All right, so let's get started. Now, anytime you want to do a cost of waiting presentation, you're going to do this on the client side. So you're always going to start a new client. Uh, cost of waiting, the reason you want to do it as a client versus doing it as a partner is you want to have all the long-term ramifications of each loan that you're showing. Uh, and the only way to do that is to prepare either a total cost or a rent versus own. So I'm going to show you both options here. I'm going to show you how you can do it in one file. So I'm going to create a brand new client. So I've hit new client up at the very top. I'm going to make this a marketing report. There we go. Had a little feedback there. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to make this a marketing report. I'm just literally going to toggle from individual over to marketing. And then I'm going to give it a report headline. So you, you don't necessarily have to use the same one I'm using, but uh, you can come up with something nice and witty. I'm just going to call it the cost of waiting to buy. Now, the reason I made it a marketing report is this removes any borrower information from it. So it's just going to have a report headline, and it won't even have a property address on the output. So I've got my headline ready to go. I don't need to have a home phone number. This is not going to be directed specifically at a client. So I'm going to leave that one empty. Now, this question here, own or rent, is what's going to determine what presentation you're going to create first. So I'm going to create the rent versus own cost of waiting first. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to choose the total cost analysis as well. So we can do this on the same file. So I'm going to choose rent. And then for my friendly name, I really don't need a friendly name on here because my, my marketing headline says it all. That's exactly what this report is going to be. But I might want to indicate something like a date or maybe who the focus group is that I'm going to be sending this out to. So I'll put Facebook fan page because that's where I'm going to post this. And then if you are working with a specific realtor partner and you want to keep them in the loop on this presentation as to how often this presentation is being viewed, uh, you want to make sure to put your partner email in here. And the reason for that is when you get to the very last screen of the presentation wizard down here at the bottom right, you're going to find that there's a checkbox that allows you to send a notification to your partner every time this report gets viewed, just like the ones that you get. So for my partner, I'm going to put uh, partner at partner.com. Oops. There we go. And then I'm going to advance the screen by hitting the right arrow here. Now at this point I need to select goals. So I'm going to choose get my first home. Then I'm going to hit my right arrow and now I am in the rent screen. So I need to determine what's an average rent for the market that I'm trying to pitch this at. So say for instance I'm looking at an area where the average rent is right around $2,000. And I'm going to set an annual rent increase, of th rent increase of 3%. Now, it's up to you in terms of what you'd like to use for your rent increase. But I will tell you that 3% is a pretty standard rate of increase for, for most rentals right now. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable using that on my presentations. If you do find that you're in a rent control area, you can actually remove the rent increase if you'd like. Uh, but in most cases, you want to have some kind of an increase going forward. There's always going to be ongoing maintenance costs that the landlord is going to pass on to the renter. So... Uh, definitely want to put something in there unless you know for a fact there's definitely no rent increase in your area. Now, the, the other fields here, monthly rent insurance, this is really just if you wanted to add a little bit more onto what they're paying as a renter, you could put something in here. So, for instance, uh, if they've got renter's insurance, it only costs them probably $10 a month to, to get renter's insurance, but we can put that in there. And if there was additional rental expenses that we wanted to include, we could also put that in. Now, the standard deduction field, the reason I'm going to point this out to you is if you do choose to use a standard deduction, it's going to show a tax advantage on the rent side as well. So normally the rent versus own only shows tax benefit on the home ownership side. But if you want to show both sides of the equation, you enter a standard deduction here. Now, if you don't know what your borrower's standard deduction is or even the target market standard deduction would be, hit find standard deduction. This is going to open up a new tab for you. And you'll begin this process to find out exactly what that's going to be. So you're going to run through these buttons, just kind of click continue, select your tax year. And then you're going to select what the status is. So for this one, I'm choosing single unmarried and I'm going to continue there. And I'll choose single once again. And we'll answer just a couple more questions. I know that it's uh, a little bit lengthy here, but. Let's do one one of, uh, let's say, 1970. And 
and there we go. So once we get through all the questions on here, you can see that the standard deduction for a single filing status, $6,100. So I'm gonna jump back over to Edge, and I'm gonna put my 6,100 there. Now you only need to do this once, and the reason I say that is because if you know that 6,100 is a standard deduction for a single single, you don't have to go through this exercise every time, just use the 6,100 going forward. Now next step is I'm gonna hit that right arrow, and now I get into the affordability section. Now, in this screen, you don't have specific information from your borrowers. Remember, this is a marketing report. But if you do want to show that tax benefit on the home ownership side, you got to put in a tax bracket right here. If you wanted to find a median tax bracket for your area, hit Find Tax Bracket. And it just shows you a very simple grid here. Since I chose single for my other one, I'm going to keep this one at single as well. And I'm going to say that that 25% bracket is probably a pretty good target, anywhere from $37,000 to, to $90,000. Uh, so I'm going to choose 25%. Now remember, you're going to enter this as a whole number. Edge already knows it's a percentage, so don't put 0.25 there, or it'll kind of skew your results. Now the minimums and maximums, we're not actually taking an application. We're not asking a client for this, so I'm actually going to go to the next screen by hitting that right arrow, and I'm going to get straight into the products. Now the products, you have several options on how you want to do this. I'm going to show you the most detailed way to do it, but you can pick and choose and, you know, structure it the way you want to see it. So for my first product, I'm going to show a 10% down buy now. And if you have templates already created, this will make your work a lot faster because you can pull in one of your templates. However, for today's discussion, I'm going to do it from scratch just so you guys can see how it's done. This is going to be a conventional, so I'm going to leave the FHA flag checked over at no. And I'm just going to enter my purchase price. So let's say $350. And you can toggle between entering the down payment as a dollar amount versus a percentage by simply clicking this button here, the percentage and dollar sign button. That'll jump you back and forth, so we can actually enter our 10% right here. And then we're going to pop in an interest rate that we can get right now and a term. Now hit the right arrow to advance the screen and you will be in the closing cost details section. Now if you already have your templates assigned in here, you want to go through the detail and just pull down one of your templates. If you don't have them assigned, you can do one of two things. You can use ballpark fees up here and that's perfectly acceptable, especially for a marketing report. Or you can go straight into the detail and itemize fees that you would see going for this transaction. So when you go into the detail, I'm going to choose my 30 year fixed purchase and you can see that I've already got this filled out so everything is there the way I need it to be. I probably do need to change my loan origination because it's going to be a little bit higher in this case. Not that high. But make sure you've got all the necessary fees in there and they don't have to be exact. Oftentimes you're not going to know what the title fees are until you actually run it through your LOS. So it's okay to guess at title fees on this one. Um, reserves as well. You're not going to know these until you look at the specific case. Uh, and when the, when it's going to close. So usually I just kind of use ballpark for these ones too. Now once you've got all your fees in there, hit apply to loan. And if you need to charge points on top of that, you can put, put your points in still here. Uh, I do recommend you include prepaid interest days. And then I'm going to advance to the monthly costs. Now monthly costs, I like doing these as factor percentages. And here in California, we have a 1.25 factor for property tax. But uh, if you want to figure out what your factor is, try pulling up one of your recent fee worksheets so you can see what the property tax was for a specific value. Enter that scenario inside Edge and then start kind of hitting and missing with the, the ratio here until you get that property tax payment close to what your LOS was talking about. Once you do that, you know that you can use that ratio going forward. Now, hazard insurance, a little bit different. I know that uh, when people are underwriting these, they just use set dollar amounts quite often. Um, I like to use the 0.35, but completely up to you in terms of what you want to use. I see people just kind of just winging it, depending on how many hundreds of thousands of dollars a loan's going to be. They'll increase it by 20 bucks for every 100,000 or something like that. But completely up to you. Again, I like using the ratios, but you can, you can do it otherwise if you'd like. Now, mortgage insurance. This particular program, if we wanted to build a no MI scenario, we could certainly do that. We could boost the rate to cover what the MI would be. In this case, I'm just going to show them one that does have monthly MI. So I'm going to enter my factor for this. Let's say it's 0.75. And 
I have a 78% cutoff, which is exactly what I want for conventional loans. I'm not going to check the CalCMI on balance box. This is only for government loans. Don't check this box unless you're doing a, an FHA or a USDA loan. The cutoff months, again, this is just for those government loans where we have to tell it a minimum number of months that MI is going to carry. So I'm going to leave that empty. All I need is that 78% cutoff and I'm good to go on this conventional. Next step, add another product. So I've done the buy now. Now it's time to show them some options on what happens if they wait. So I'm going to use the copy from button and I'm going to copy my buy now product. And then I'm going to rename this one and I'm going to call this one wait for drop. So this is what happens if they waited for a couple of months for a price drop. But remember, in a couple of months, the rates can change pretty dramatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the price here. I'm going to say, okay, they waited and it actually went down to, uh, well, let's say 335. I'm still going to leave my 10% down payment percentage. But remember, in that time that they waited, rates could potentially go up pretty high. I'm going to boost it by a full point. Now, because I use the copy button, all my fees are already there. I don't have to worry about those. Even my monthly, my monthly costs are already in there. So this product is done. Next step, let's add another product. This one is what would happen if they waited for the drop, but it didn't happen. The price stayed exactly the same, and they just waited a couple of months, or even a month for that matter. And I'm going to call this one no drop. I'm going to use that copy from button again, and I'm going to copy that 10% buy now. I'm going to leave my purchase price the same because they waited and the price didn't drop. But in the time they waited, rates went up. So I altered my rate now to be 5.625. Copy function took care of the rest for me, so I don't need to do anything with the fees or the monthly costs. And I can go straight over to a worst case scenario. That's going to be my last product. So I'll call this one worst case. Now at this point, I'll use that copy from button one more time, and I'm gonna copy that 10% down buy now. Now remember, my, my drop scenario, I dropped it to 335, so that's a $15,000 variance on the purchase price. So for my worst case, I'm gonna go the other way $15,000, and I'm gonna change this to be 365. So this is what happens if they waited the two months, they didn't see a price drop. In fact, the price went up because there's bidding wars. Maybe it got reappraised. Maybe there was uh, I mean, there's some repairs done on the property so that could get reappraised. But in the same time period where they waited, that rate went up. So not only did we have a price increase, but we also have a rate increase. Copy function took care of everything for me. So now it's time to just eyeball what I've got. Now, as you can see, the order in which I did these products gives me this really cool upward motion going towards the worst case scenario. I like to do it that way. You can certainly position it the other way if you'd like, uh, but it kind of makes sense to me visually to do it this way. Now at this point, you have the option of choosing what kind of metrics you'd like to look at for the short and long term. Do I want to look at rent versus principal paid? Do I want to look at rent versus tax benefit? Or do I want to show a tax benefit analysis? Remember I told you, if you enter the standard deduction, you will have a tax benefit on the rent side. And you can see that over the 60 month period of time, they've got a standard deduction benefit giving them 7625. But look at our home ownership options. Even our worst case scenario, it actually has more tax benefit because we've got that higher rate and a higher payment. So we're paying more interest. So for today's case study, I think I'll leave it on tax benefit analysis. And then let's look at our long term section. Now, total principal paid, you can see rent is just, it's throwing away 448, and then the new options are paying principal. This could be effective for some of your presentations, but it might be a little confusing for your borrowers. Total net worth, obviously rent, they've got zero net worth, and on the new options, they've got significant net worth. Now, obviously the worst case at 339 versus the best case at 335, pretty similar. So this really doesn't, this doesn't say anything to my borrower about why they should buy now versus a worst case. What really will? Total interest in MI paid. And when we toggle that one over, you can see that total interest in MI paid on this worst case is 261, best case 203, and that's only over a 15 year period of time. $50,000 difference here. So I think I'm gonna choose this metric and move forward with it. 
Now, remember I told you, because we made this a marketing report, it doesn't capture, it doesn't actually show any property address. So there's no, no reason to fill any of this in. You can actually go straight past this screen and get to where you're gonna choose your presentation. Now, at this point, it's already selected the rent versus own because we toggled it for rent. Now, if we want to, we can uncheck some of these options. You know, and I, I see this a lot actually, so don't feel bad about not using my strategy directly. If you just show a buy now versus a worst case, that is, it's also very, very effective. And you, then you don't have to explain the middle column. So it's completely up to you. If you wanted to do it that way, you would simply uncheck these boxes and they will not show up on your presentation at all. I am gonna leave them there for today. And I'm gonna have to complete some payment notes here. I wanna make sure and disclaim what that payment represents. So payment includes hazard insurance, property taxes, MI, and that should be it. So, and MI. So I've got my payment notes in there. We're good to go on that. Now I just kind of get to revisit what each screen is showing so I can check it out. If you wanted to alter some of the verbiage that appears behind the more info sections on your, on your live presentations, you can edit the text right here. Same thing in the short-term area and the long-term area. Now the final part of this is we need to generate the link. So we do want to be notified. We're going to leave it on email link. And I would always encourage you anytime you create a presentation inside Edge that you choose the email link. Don't, do, don't, don't go direct to print. Don't go direct to PDF. Those can't be edited. When you print something out, there's when you go back and make a change inside Edge, you got to reprint it. So pointless. Choose the email link. This is going to be the most portable way to get this report around. Not only is it dynamic, it can change when you change data inside Edge, but this is the one that has the notifications on it. So if you don't send out an email link, you're never going to get notified when that presentation is viewed. The email link is also what allows you to record a video. Never seen a video in a print job, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Choose the email link and you've got a lot more options. Now, if you do want to enable the call button, this would be a great presentation to do so on because this one's you're probably going to use this for lead capture. Now, the click to call feature, if you want a little bit more information about that, click on your help button inside Edge, and then when you get to the knowledge base, search for click to call. And uh, it'll tell you all the details on it, how you can use it, there's a video tutorial, and it shows you how you can purchase additional credits. We give everybody three credits to begin with so you can test it out and see if it's something you wanna use. And then after that, you would need to physically purchase more to be able to use that functionality. Now, final checkbox here, send Edge View alert to the partner. I want my partner knowing exactly how much traction this presentation is getting because I've posted it to Facebook. Anytime you quote a rate, got to put a date on it. This is just going to protect you for later if somebody comes across this report a couple of months down the line and says, hey, you were quoting you know, 4.625 and you know when I called you a few minutes ago, you told me, no, it's up at five now. Well, hey, that was the cost of waiting. <laughs> so we selected our quote date. Now we're going to generate a link. Now this particular link is actually going to be different than the total cost we're going to generate in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up in another tab, just so we've got it there. All right, so let me show you what it looks like. There's the, the finalized report. This is the rent versus zone analysis. You can see that it goes through all the details on all the different loan products that I was covering. Um, and at this point, this presentation is done with the exception of I probably want to put a video on it. But I want to show you how to now transition this same client to produce a total cost analysis because you can do both. So we're going to jump back over to Edge. I'm going to close here and then I'm going to use, I'm going to hover over a presentation and I'm going to choose select report again. This time, and actually I'm going to copy this text because I want to use it again. This time I'm going to select total cost. And I'm going to paste my payment notes in there. And then I'm going to continue through the screens till I get to the end. Now, same thing. I want an edge view alert going out to my partner. I need to put a quote date on it. And then I'm going to generate a link. Now, this link is different from the rent versus own link that you already generated, but both are live. So if you go in and you were to make changes to any of the products, both of those links will be affected. So if you're going in and just updating rates for what they are today, those two links that you've put out in social media land or wherever you've got them, 
they're automatically going to update with what's inside edge. So your rent versus own will be correct and your total cost analysis will be correct. So let's see what these look like together. So by using one client, you can see that I've now prepared two presentations. I've got my cost of waiting on a total cost analysis, and I've got my cost of waiting compared to rent. Both are great presentations to put out there. This would be your home, your first time home buyer presentation when you're doing the rent versus own. Whereas your total cost analysis, this may be for investment homes. This could also be for first time home buyers, but usually you do want to show them the adverse effect of continuing to rent because you're trying to get them off the fence. So this other presentation where you're just showing a cost of waiting analysis with no rent can definitely be used for investment properties, you know, second homes, all that kind of good stuff. Now, the final part is understanding how this is going to look to people. Now, as I told you, we're, we're looking at the browser version right now, but there is, of course, the mobile version of this. So if I was to pull up this particular link, and let's see if I can get that on my iPad for you. And I'm going to move it over just for a second so I can see it. If you guys all bear with me for about 30 seconds here, I will get this input. All right, so you can see that when they get this on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android, the first thing they're going to see, and, and again, they're probably going to be clicking on this from wherever you placed it, so on Facebook or whatnot, they're going to be clicking on it from a, a mobile device. So they're going to first land in here, and they're going to see your disclaimer. They've got to hit I understand to see what's going on there. Now, had I recorded a video on this presentation, there would be a video of me talking to my client right here. Or in this case, since it's marketing, just kind of giving a more global message about what this presentation is. Now, you should be aware of what this looks like because your clients are going to see it this way when they click on it. So I would highly encourage that all of you install the mobile app on your phones, on your, on your tablets, you know, whatever mobile devices you've got. And the easiest way to do it, send yourself an Edge presentation link and then click on it from your device. It's automatically going to take you over to the appropriate app store so you can download the right app. And then as soon as you've got it installed, click on that link one more time. It'll fire it right into the Edge app and you'll see exactly what your client would see. So for instance, our summary screen. You can see that we've got all the same information that we had up in the browser version all the way down to our payment stream, which is on the left here. Our left bottom is the one I clicked there. But you can see this one actually even shows, you know, the difference in payments. This is when MI drops off. You know, as we go through all of them, each one of them has their own payment stream. And when you hit the back button, this will take you straight back over to where monthly payment savings is. So I'm actually tapping on monthly payment savings. That's going to take me over and show me the graphics. You know, you can see there's a $300 difference between buying now versus a worst case scenario where prices go up and rates go up. If you click on the more info section at the very top right of this, it'll drill into all the details we were looking at before. The rate, the APR, term, shows the mortgage insurance, total pity, and total payments. So if you had any reinvestments going on here, you'd see that the total payment would be a little bit different from the pity payment because your reinvestment strategy would be appended to it. And now we get to our short-term savings, savings over 60 months. And I'm going to hit the more info section at the top right because I want you to see the numbers and I want you to see how they work and what we're doing to generate the short-term savings. When we're looking at the short-term savings in Edge, we're looking at just the unrecoverable costs of each loan program. So what we do is we take and we look at the interest and in MI that they're paying over this period of time. And we're going to subtract out the tax benefit for that period. And we're going to add the closing costs. So the real costs of this one are the interest in MI and the closing costs, but we're subtracting out tax benefit because that's obviously a gain. We come up with a total cost that is an amalgamation of these three figures. We then compare those total costs between each of the four products to find out what the differences are. And you'll always find that one product will have a zero for the net savings. That's because that particular product is the highest cost of the ones you're showing. So it's being used as the benchmark. Now, what this means is that this no drop, for instance, the net savings is $3,000 as opposed to the worst case. Now, obviously, our buy now, $15,000 greater savings than our worst case would be. So let's go back a screen and we'll look at the long term. Long term, pretty straightforward here. 
how much interest in MI are you going to pay over the long term? Well, I'm looking at 203 for my long term on buying now versus 261 on waiting. So very you know self-explanatory, but if you hit the more info section, you can actually drill down to the details and see exactly where these are coming from. It also shows you things like the total principal that you would have paid for each one of these programs, where your equity position is, and where your loan balance is for each one. All right, so let's go back, and I do want to show you the rent versus own real quick, so let me uh, swipe left. I'm going to go back over to my rent versus own presentation, and I'm going to hit the share button because that's what's, that's what's going to give me that link again, and you can see that's 16 LMX4. So all I need to do is go in here and change that six to a four. So that should be pretty straightforward and easy. So here we are in rent versus own, same kind of thing. We've got a disclaimer going. We would have a video playing if I had recorded one. When we go to our summary section, we're seeing the same thing we were before, except for now we're comparing against rent. And as we go into the graphics, you can see that when we get to net monthly payments, you know, obviously, our net monthly payment on the rent is going to be just the total rent. And I do want to explain how these net monthly payments are generated. And I think I can do that a little easier by showing you on the browser. Now, when we're looking at a rent versus own, and we're looking to find what this net payment is that we're showing right here, this, this 1183, 1483, what we're doing is we're starting with the total payment. This is the pity payment up here. We're subtracting, we're subtracting out the tax benefit and the principal paid. These are both positive figures for the borrower. So we're subtracting those out so we can isolate just the cost of that payment. That's how we arrive at this 1483 here. Now on the rent side, we're taking that 2010 rent, which is what their total rent is with that extra $10 rental insurance. We're subtracting out the tax benefit of 127, and that's how we're arriving at our 1883 figure. So you can see we compare these net monthly payments, and that's what's gonna show over on the right side graph over here. But we do point out the total pity payment. So if you wanted to, you could highlight these inside your Edge presentation so that when they show up on either the browser or the mobile device, the borrower is still going to have their attention drawn to the total pity payments. But I'd also highlight those net payments because those are a great discussion piece for you. So the borrower may not be aware that, you know, part of what you're paying, you're getting it back. You know, you're retaining your principal paid in the form of equity. And then you're also getting a tax benefit. So your entire mortgage payment is not just up in smoke like your, like your rent payment is. So when you're explaining this, make sure you, you, you go over it with your borrower if you're doing this live with them. When you're doing it on the video, I would just touch on it very briefly. Your net payments are just the unrecoverable costs of each one of these programs. With the rent, you're throwing away $18.83 a month. With each of these new programs here, you're retaining part of your payment in the form of equity and tax benefit. So your net payment is less. Again, that's about a 10 second explanation for what the net monthly payment is. Feel free to reuse that. Now we get over the tax benefit, same kind of concept as we were looking at before, the tax benefit on the rent side, remember this is their standard deduction over that time period. And then the home ownership options, the way the tax benefit is generated inside Edge is we take their tax bracket and we multiply it by the amount of interest that they've paid during this period. Then we'll take the tax bracket, multiply it by the amount of property tax they've paid during this period. We'll add those figures together, and that's what's giving us the total tax benefit here. Now, if you guys need that equation in writing, shoot us a quick note over at support at mortgagecoach.com. We'll give you the full equation there. Uh, there also is the availability inside Edge to make mortgage insurance deductible. Currently, it is not. So they vote on this every year. This year, it's not. So I wouldn't check that box for right now. But if you did want to show a future type of presentation where you anticipate that that would be deductible, you could certainly do that. I've also seen people use the MI field as a deductible field for things like investment properties, because you can actually write off a lot of your, uh, your, your monthly costs. So that instead of putting, let's say, the hazard insurance in the hazard insurance field, they'll put it in the MI field and then tell it never to cut off. And it actually tends to work out pretty well for showing tax benefit on an investment property. But I think that's about all we've got for today. I'm going to check and see if we have any questions real quick before we get out of here. Uh, so Marcus's question, can you do a cost of waiting analysis with and cross market with a realtor? Absolutely. In fact, I would highly encourage it, Marcus. It's a great idea. So when you're doing your video, uh, and actually you might want to check out the, the presentation we did on May 7th. That was about creating a realtor prospect packet. Now the realtor prospect packet talked about 
how to actually create your videos so that you can show, you know, you can go over the right steps necessary to court the realtor and to show them how you service your clients. So I would highly encourage all of you to watch that if you get the chance. It's definitely going to, uh, it's going to help you just compose that strategy. Um, Marcus, other question. Uh, he says, when you send out a link and are not sure if your client is going to open with a smartphone or desktop, do you suggest writing something that says first download the app from the app store? You know, Marcus, it's a great idea. I, I love indicating anything about the app when I'm, when I'm sending out an email, you know, um, and matter of fact, some of our top producers in the hall of fame, their emails, they're definitely saying that they're saying, Hey, if you're opening this on your smartphone, when you click on the link, you're going to be prompted to install the app, go ahead and install it. Then click on my link again. And you're good to go. Um, and, and it can be short and simple like that. It, it can be more detailed if you want. You could even show screenshots of what it looks like. So completely up to you, but Marcus, I think that's a great idea. Uh, definitely let them know if they're opening from a smartphone, they're going to be prompted to install this free app. It is safe. They should install it. It's going to actually allow you to communicate going forward with them because each time you update this proposal, all I have to do is open it on their mobile app again, and it's they've got the updated values in there. Uh, Derek's question, he says, I came in late. Why does the renter have a tax benefit? Ah, so the tax benefit, Derek, what that is is I entered a standard deduction for this particular renter. So what we're showing here is we're showing the rent payment and then we're, we've got a tax benefit of 127 here because that is the standard deduction broken down annually into months. So that, that's what that one, uh, that, that, that's why it's showing there. Now, if you don't want to show a tax benefit on the rent side, just don't enter the standard deduction. It'll only show the tax benefit on the home ownership sides. Uh, Mike's asking, can I show posting this to Facebook? I can't actually, Mike, because I'm not on a computer that has my Facebook account on it. However, I will tell you, I recently created a video on how to do this, and I think you're going to like it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like real quick. Now, you can always find our knowledge base by hitting the help button inside Edge. And then you can do a search for, say, Facebook. This one here, how do I edit the images and text when sharing an edge link to Facebook? Facebook changed recently how you can share things on the site. So what, what kind of images you can use, how, how links are treated. So I would encourage you, check this one out. There's two different ways to do this. You can share directly from an edge presentation by hitting the share button and it'll, it'll allow you to go straight to Facebook. The difference here is that one is a, is a quick way and it's gonna get your post up there, but you don't have a whole lot of editing capability. So what I would encourage you to do is use the method right here. This is going to allow you to select different images if you want. You can edit all the text that's alongside it. You can even edit the name of the link if you really need to. So check this one out when you get off here. And, uh, of course, if you run into any issues or if you need further clarification on it, shoot us a note over at support at mortgagecoach.com, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely get on it for you. Uh, one more question for Mike, and then I think we'll go ahead and wrap. He says, any ideas to encourage prospects to open the link on Facebook? You know, I would say the best thing you can do with those is make sure you've got a compelling image on, on that link. So when you watch this, you're going to see that I show you how to choose different images that you can use to tie to your link. Find yourself a good infographic. You know, the cost of waiting infographic, we've actually, uh, we've produced a couple on our Facebook page that you feel free to nab if you'd like. But um, find a good graphic that just shows maybe rates going up or, you know, it could be as, as simple as just a, a little arrow line on a chart that's going up. But it's got to be something that's going to be relative to what you're showing. So the, the best advice I can give you is uh, get, get a nice catchy image. That's, that's going to be your, your best way to do it. But make it look safe. Make, make it, don't, you don't want to use an image with a skull and crossbones on it is what I mean. Use something that it looks inviting. Something like, uh, you know, with very light pastel colors perhaps. Uh, if you're going to show a chart, um, show, show the red chart going up. But, you know, keep all the other colors kind of mild. You don't want to you won't you don't want to make them think that I'm not sure what this is. and I'm not sure if I can click on it. You want them to think, oh, OK, I know what that's going to be. Let's check it out and see what this is offering. And of course, alongside that, you have the ability to write a description on what you're posting. So make sure to give them a little color around what this particular link is is doing. And, you know, at that point, you know, as uh, as, as actually I think Marcus was asking about that earlier, too. Um, you want to let them know, hey, if you're opening this on mobile, download the app. But with that said, I think I'm going to go ahead and close the call for today. Thanks for the great questions, everybody. Uh, we're going to continue to do this every Wednesday. So join us back here at 11 o'clock next Wednesday, and we will be covering a new topic for you. So with that said, have a wonderful day. And again, contact us and support. If you have any questions or concerns, we're always happy to help. Thank you much and take care.